And now to go around the Canadian Football League, get the hurry up offense going for three downs. You ready? Indeed. Yes. Coming into this week, you had four teams with winning records, four teams without. My question to you on first down is which of the non winning record teams have the most uh, potential to make some noise once the postseason rolls around? Would it be Hamilton, Winnipeg, Edmonton, or Saskatchewan, Schultze? D, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I like their athletic offensive line. I like their pass rushing defensive ends come late October, early November. That environment is awesome. Saskatchewan. I have to agree with you and go with these Rough Riders shows. See, I think they have the best combination of a solid defense and a potential elite quarterback. I have to go with those Rough Riders. Allow me to risk further alienation across Rider land and pick the Eskimos. And I'm picking Edmonton because of their defense. When you get into the playoffs, defense can win a whole lot of games for you, even if your offense isn't clicking. Take care of the football. Edmonton has a chance to make some noise. And Edmonton wants to get its offense going as well. They are concerned about that, so much so that they brought in an offensive advantage advisor this week a gentleman by the name of David Kelly to help out Marcus Crandall their offensive coordinator so second down what do you think of this move do you like it do you not like it or does it not matter doesn't matter let me tell you that some advisor up in the booth or chattering in the coach's ear isn't going to make a, a bit of difference on the football field look coaches talk amongst themselves all the time players never even know what they're saying to another the fact is there's an advisor in there also chirping away isn't going to make any difference at all except for maybe to marcus crandall he's not going to like it but on the field no difference jock with you on this one it doesn't matter at all most of the guys are going to say who the heck is this guy they have no conception of what the advisor is really doing he's just going to have a different set of have an opinion it doesn't matter I don't like it if you don't think your offensive coordinator is doing a great job get rid of him but don't bring somebody in there who's going to be looking over his shoulder shoulder possibly reporting back to somebody important on that team I don't great, like it. A great game coming up on Sunday with Calgary facing Saskatchewan and uh, Riders head coach Corey Chamberlain made it kind of a double guarantee he said that Stamps running back John Cornish will not run for 100 yards along the ground. He's been running all over everybody in the last month. And he also said if he does, somebody's going to get <laughs> cut. So kind of a nasty double-edged sword here. And my question to you now is what do you think of this? Do you like this, don't like it, or it doesn't matter? I like it. you got to do whatever you can to motivate your football team. It's uh, do or die time for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Look, I don't like it when head coaches go to the media and single out individuals. But if you're going to make, I wouldn't call this a, a guarantee. I call it a commitment. If you're going to make a commitment publicly about a unit, that's all good as far as I'm concerned. I don't like it. And this goes on all the time, but it usually stays within the confines of the locker room. It doesn't get out to the media, out to the public. Because what happens now, it takes the focus off the most important stat, and that's the win. I don't like it. It doesn't matter. We're already in September. They already know who they're going to cut if he reaches that goal. Corey Chamberlain's just giving the kid a second chance and maybe one cut, maybe two, maybe a whole bunch of cuts. What if Cornish gets like 103 yards? Do they win or lose? They lose. Uh, Someone's going to get cut. That's Someone cold. Get cut. You know what, John Corner, she's closing in on 1,000 yards rushing. Only three non-import running backs have done that in the last 24 years. And here are some other stats for you. The halftime numbers of a 15-9 football game. Pretty even up and down, but look at the turnovers. Five for Edmonton last week, none so far. Here's Ryan Rashog with Hugh Charles. Hugh, your football team had faced just a, a ton of criticism heading into this game. What was your mindset in there before the game? Was any of that on your mind? No, you know, I let that negative energy, uh, you know, dissipate from our team. We can't let that kind of energy come into our locker room. We know we're a good team. We started off strong. We had a little struggle in the middle of it. Now, we're, now it's time to come back. The run game is something that you've struggled to establish early on in games. Not necessarily the case in this one. What's the difference been? You know, just getting the opportunity. I think uh, our play calling is uh, just giving more, us more opportunity as, as running backs to, to get to run upfield. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, fresh off her keynote address earlier today to the students at the <laughs> University of Ontario Institute of Technology. Wow. The Ridgeback herself, there she is. And I promise it's a real university. People ask me all the time, oh, you graduated from U of T. No, I graduated from UOIT. And just like university, I came late, I wasn't prepared, and I winged the entire speech. So it went really well, just to let you know. First time this season, the BC Lions have been held without a major score. Heading into a second half, they trail 15 to 9. Here's G. Roy Simon with Ryan Rashad. G. Roy down at the half. What did the head coach say? You know, we just need to, uh, you know, everybody just needs to play football. Um, you know, forget the thinking, forget everything else. You just need to turn up the intensity and play football. 
The offense hasn't normally sputtered. What's the problem been offensively getting the ball moving? You know, we're just making too many simple mistakes. Um, I think we're, we're just going to show everything up and uh, make things happen. Thanks, Thanks, you. Thank you. And making matters worse, Tim Brown, collarbone, perhaps shoulder issue out of the lineup for the rest of the game. There's head coach Mike Benavides. He is an integral cog of their special teams, gives them excellent field position, and he will be watching now. So, a lot factors in here heading into this second half. The BC Lions, the best record in the Canadian Football League, a team that could turn it on, but right now they have been stifled. Well, they sure have the Edmonton Eskimos, after getting shellacked in Hamilton last week, have gotten back to playing what Cavis Reed would probably describe as Edmonton Eskimos football. Joe Burnett. Dropped right there. Justin Kahn in on the special teams tackle. Stephen Giles. Outstanding numbers in that first half. 12 of 14, 160 yards and the touchdown. And Hugh Charles, 52 yards from scrimmage. Kerry Cope. Touchdown catch his fourth of the year in that first half as the Eskimos take a 15 to 9 lead into this third quarter. Eskimo team that has to protect the football now. Great BC defense and batted away by Ryan Phillips. This is a team that also can score defensively, of course, these Lions, the Ball Hawks. Edmonton Eskimos plus seven in turnover differential leading the CFL this season, mostly because they have forced a lot of turnovers. Of BC Lions, that terrific veteran secondary, whole unit coordinated by Rich Stubler. Held that same position for the Edmonton Eskimos a year ago. He decided to return to BC in the offseason. He had been the D-line coach there in 2010. Objectionable conduct, taunting, BC number 96. 10 yard penalty. Well, the Khalif First Mitchell down. saga continues. He has been wound tight here tonight and now takes a taunting penalty. Seems nonplussed about it. I'm not as concerned as his coaches and teammates might be as they see the yardsticks move. Ferocious player, quite a character. Khalif Mitchell. Play action. Giles. And again, it's Marcus Henry. And a little FaceTime for Anthony Reddick and Corey Banks. The talk continues. Two teams that know each other very well and quite frankly don't like each other very much. Second and nine. Giles sends them out. Six receivers. And picked off by Adam Big Hill. Off of Shamad Chambers, and there's the first turnover. Induced by the BC Lions. And Adam Big Hill has his third interception and more penalty flags. Right place, right time. Well, Big Hill drops into coverage, and you ask Mike Benavides repeatedly, you know, what is it that stands out to you about Adam Big Hill as a player? And there are so many things you could say. Great hitter, you know, plays downhill, gets involved in every play. But Benavides always talks about the fact that he has some of the best hands he's ever seen on a linebacker. There's Big Hill with his third pick of the year. Adam Harris barges into that line, half the first down yardage. And the Lions leaders after the first half. Travis Lule, of course, 133 yards passing, 12 of 20. Andrew Harris, 53 yards out of the backfield. Kerry Johnson in his return to the lineup. 
Having a great impact. Four catches for 60 yards thus far. BC Lions lead the CFL in big plays. 30-yard passes, 20-yard rushes. They haven't had many here tonight. They're limited to two big plays so far in this ballgame. Over the time. Stopped right there in his tracks is Sean Gore. And it's going to be in front of the first down marker. And from here, it looks like he's a little shy, maybe a half yard. They'll likely measure this, or will they? They're going to bring the big team out here. It's going to be a third down gamble for Mike Riley. But a no-brainer trailing in this football game, looking to get a spark for his BC Lions offense as head coach Mike Benavides wants to keep them on the field. They're going to measure it, but Riley's already out there. And this measurement is really about determining ex exactly how far they have to go, more so than trying to figure out if they've got the first down or not. Travis Lulay, kind of a pedestrian ninth tonight for the reigning most outstanding player who has been on a serious roll. Touchdown streak and again without a major in that first half. That's saying something about the Edmonton D. Here comes the crowd now. Third down. Gore could be in trouble here and spinning. It's going to be dependent on the spot. Did he get there? Well, and it looks like a favorable spot for the Lions from here. And based on forward progress, it looked like he got it, but that Eskimo defense reacted well because it looked like they were outflanked initially on that play, and Sean Gore might have more than just the first down yardage. Interesting play call. Riley usually squirms or lunges behind his center that time the end around which they tried earlier with Sean Gore you're right he looked like he outflanked everybody and then they caught up with him well, they sure did closed in a hurry so Lule comes back there it is that spin move got him past the marker Marlon Bruce in motion. Andrew Harris, a little dump pass. Chased down by T.J. Hill and Joe Burnett. Tag team tackle, four-yard pickup. Another second down conversion attempt coming up for the Lions. That's the seventh catch of the game for double three. Uh, Andrew Harris. You know, this is BC's offensive motif facing the Edmonton Eskimos. Is and Andrew Harris comes into this game leading the BC Lions in receptions to begin with. But it seems particularly against Edmonton. This is how they try to deploy their running back most often. Lule scrambles out of the pocket now. Sewell gives chase downfield and short for Johnson. The Eskimo defense holds again and Lule showing something we haven't seen very much of this season dating back to last season some frustration right now yeah well he knew he had a, a shot to get the football to johnson he's going to work back as travis lule comes towards that sideline the guys on the deep routes are working back towards the line of scrimmage shallow routes working upfield the side of the quarterback's roll lule knew he could get johnson open but he just couldn't get the throw there paul mccallum this has been his achilles heel beyond the 40-yard line this season, just 6 of 11 from the 40 to the 49. Longest kick of the night from the 43. And this one is wide. And picking his way out of the end zone is Joe Burnett. Only up past the 10-yard line. And McCallum's struggle beyond the 40 continues. Josh Wendy's plus visit Wendy's to get a game cup to get bonus entries tonight and tomorrow that's it get in Stephen Giles great bit of deception Stephen Giles having one of his best nights as a CFL quarterback so far 
we saw him earlier with a big completion to Nate Kuhorn on a play where he practiced some great deception in the backfield. Good job hiding the football, selling the fake. Here he does it again. Getting the Lions defenders to bite hard on that run fake to Hugh Charles. Opening things up on the bootleg. Again, pulling it back. He's got a great move. Pulling that football out of the back's stomach as Shema Chambers struggling right now. It's two passes in a row that were in his hands. Stephen Giles, good numbers. That one pick, but again off a deflection. And his team, most importantly for him, leading. Eskimos trying to get off a three-game slide. Here's the rush. Giles is down. Khalif Mitchell lowers the boom. It has been an eventful night here for Khalif Mitchell. Well, this is good Khalif. Just playing football, and he can be so physically dominant. And there you see the, the move. Great job with the hands on the center. Kyle Koch in on Giles in a hurry. Sometimes kind of like one of those enforcers in hockey. Khalif Mitchell can be a bully out there. The guy who has a real soft spot away from the field. Self-taught pianist. And on the field. He is a beast. Bradshaw, high kick. Again, no Tim Brown, so Johnson with a hurdle over, and then uh, he is dropped by Darcy Brown playing his first game with the Eskimos. 59, the home side. Quarter. Six point Eskimo lead. Travis Lule having a tough time hearing. Roly Lombala out of the backfield. A gang of green Eskimos bring him down. Roly Lombala getting a rare touch on the play. Quickly swarmed by the Eskimo defenders. Lines up as a tight end on this play. Slips out to the flat for a quick hitter from Lule. Roly's little brother, Steven, ranked among the top prospects in the CFL's Canadian Scouting Bureau September rankings this is your, this week. It's your favorite time of year, isn't it? Hey, CIS season underway. CFL. Football down south. If you're a football fan, you gotta love it. Oh, what a play. Andrew Harris on that delayed draw. Perfectly executed. Harris comes up limping. Uh, Harris coming up limping is a huge issue. You've got Stu Ford, the other Canadian running back, already out of the lineup, and now Tim Brown on the sidelines. This draw play, watch Travis Lule with the, he fakes the hit screen, which freezes the defense just long enough. That hesitation allows Andrew Harris a seam to turn it upfield. We'll keep an eye on his health as this game goes on. Key second down conversion. The Lions have had issues with that tonight. Harris still gets some positive yardage when it looked like he would be stopped. And right now, this Eskimo defense that has not been bending is bending a little bit. Well, one part of the Eskimos' dominance in the first half of this football game had to do with time of possession. They did a good job keeping the, the defense fresh because the offense was on the field so much. BC. Putting a little bit of a drive together here. And shifting the balance in terms of that statistical category. Could start to wear the Edmonton defense down a little bit. Second and four from the Eskimo 47. Travis Lulai to G. Roy Simon. Second catch of the game. For the perennial all-star. Coming off a 100-yard game. Last week against the Toronto Argonauts as the Lions staved off a late comeback by Toronto. And I know G. Roy, who spends a lot of his time away from the Lions coaching minor football, including his son's team, wanted to wish happy 11th birthday to his son, Jaden, who celebrated that milestone yesterday. 
Lule's got some time now. Now he has to chuck it away. And again, Andrew Harris, the leading receiver on the field so far in terms of catches here tonight. What an outlet Andrew Harris has become for Travis Lule. A nine-yard game. Well, a league-wide trend, but as I've said, Andrew Harris.